Look at my Star Trek toys! What's whoosh up, everybody? Welcome back to Look at My Star Trek Toys. It's a little show where uh for a hundred and something episodes, I have showed Mike my Star Trek toys. But today, today it's all backwards, it's all upside down. Mike, what are we doing? Keith, you know, we've we've unearthed the or we've unlocked the channel. We've we've moved the the toy chastity belt, if you will, and we're not just looking at the very. I don't know. I'm telling you, I didn't plan that. As you can tell, just, we have unlocked the toy chastity belt. <laughs> yeah, everyone, what, just think about that for a bit. What I meant to say <laughs> was that we're no longer just looking at the sliver of playmates '90s action figures that Keith has collected, and we're looking mm -hmm. at all kinds of Trekkie stuff. And we we checked out the lunchbox, Keith. You'll recall we also checked yep. out. What was the other rad thing we looked at? Uh, oh man, I forget. Out. What did we look at? <laughs> Why are we dying? Uh, <laughs> I'm entirely lost track of what we looked at. Uh, uh, back in the day, I had a not so small fascination with. Well, we put together the DS9. Don't forget. Yeah, that was fun. A, a not so small fascination with micro machines. I yes. loved those little things. Smashing them together. I loved the commercials. I loved that fast talking guy. What I didn't know, Keith, and what was brought up to us from one of the comments on the channel or uh, in passing conversation on one of our episodes, was that there was a release of Star Trek micro machine ships and such. Not Star in, Trek ships. Did I say, what did I say? You just said ships. Oh, yeah, Star Trek ships. And since I wasn't a Star Trek guy, I never had them. But yeah. Keith, thanks mm. to the aftermarket on the eBay, uh, they are now mine. They just came. I can't wait to show them to you. So let's go ahead and take a peek. Ah, uh, I can't wait. All right, so. Unsullied. Uh, this thing un is unopened. Unopened. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that it's, old tape. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that. So uh, these came out in <clears throat> 1993, produced by Galoob who uh, Galoob Toys produced the first next generation action figures, a little 3.75s, uh, which we're going to get to at some point. Um, I have to finish up, uh, I have to get Tasha Yar to complete my series one. Uh, but they put out some of those um, back in 1988. But here we are in 1993, while Playmates is dominating the action figure world, Galoob was like, you know what? Let's do some little micro machines. I also... Loved Micro Machines. You know, uh, I tried to buy my first girlfriend with Micro Machines. Do you know that, Mike? <laughs> oh, I can't wait to cut that out. This No, no, no. This, this was third grade, and uh, there was a girl named Sarah who I was desperately in love with. And uh, I, I tried to give her some of my favorite Micro Machines in exchange I, I bet for you her... Did, Keith. I bet for you her did. love for the rest of time. She took my Micro Machines and my heart and never returned uh alas but uh yeah i gave her my black lamborghini micro machine that was oh, a good stuff. i remember exactly the one you're talking about it was the fact. best one right yeah there was a, oh. there's a couple gold ones i really loved as well pretty good so yeah so this is it's interesting to see the difference between the galoob and the playmates uh boxes but they have a lot of similarities Lots of lots of text it's like a cereal box you know they want to give you plenty to to look at while you're in the car on the drive home Sure. On the back is really pretty impressive. I mean, that's really... Uh, what I love about this is, is how many you're going to get. It's so ca so cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, my cats are going to just go crazy. Uh, but you can't What's lose great any is you of get these. You get a lot of detail on each of the things that, we, that we're going to take a peek at. Oh, so cool. I mean, I, I can't... They've got a lot of information there. That's mm -hmm. great. On Keith, I get my own little Deep Space Nine. You, oh, that's, that, I mean, that's the best part. And you've got a Cardassian, a Galar class warship, a and a cube. runabout. So this is 93. So this all came out the first season of Deep Space Nine. Mm -hmm. So, of course, there's no Defiant because the Defiant didn't exist at that point. Uh, but, wow, you can really get all the, uh, I mean, Mike, I think it's time to break the seal. Oh, I'm I, too excited. I think you're right. Okay, and and what's the bonus one you get up top? Bonus, we get... For this limited edition set only, we get the USS Enterprise. And that's the retro, that's the refit, I think. We'll see. We'll see that's shortly. 
So cool. All right, so I thought we'd pop it out and then maybe uh, put them on the spinny and take a put little close look at each. But uh, I'm excited. My I'm my je- my dead finger is healing. Everyone, thank you so much for your concern. Woof! That is grim, sir. Yeah. That is grim. It's 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 a stark improvement. So uh, <laughs> that's the good news. All right. This is. Hold on. Let me get the. Let me get the smell. Smell the '90s. Yeah, I was gonna say smell the '80s, but this is '90s. 1993. Oh, I know. Oh. So here's the problem with you doing this: is now I'm gonna need them too. Keith, what do you think I've been doing for all these years? <laughs> I oh, know. so really cool packaging. Sorry to, I always love to bury the lead, but they that yeah. that background of the box is really cool. Oh yeah, very very. And cool. And now I throw it gently. That box is worth some. Oh, the galoob. I mean, see, these are also very practical to store in a tiny. Uh, you know, in an apartment, or when you've already hoarded your basement. Do they yeah. come with stands? They do. Oh, that's great. Uh, honestly, that's really key, is for displaying them on the shelf if they have stands. Because I have other small ships that don't have stands, so they sort of list weirdly on the uh, bookshelf. I do believe they also sold these in individual packs uh, yes, they did. per show. Yes, so they they actually had a, um, yes, they had the the next gen limited edition which came out in 1994, uh, and so they they were in smaller packs. So you had the uh, the super pack, the next gen limited edition, the collector set, and this sort of encapsulated all of them from that era all in one box. Now I don't know. I think they're exactly the same ships. Okay. Um, but they obviously coming in these different sets. This is by far the most efficient way to get them. I think All right, we show start, me that Deep Space Nine. We start with Deep Space, right? And this is where it gets really impressive. They're able to get this much detail on that small of a thing. They got the yellow paint in there. They got the red light. I mean, it, yeah, uh, Playmates, if you're listening, uh, that's a fair amount of detail for something that small. <laughs> That's really going to make me dizzy. All right. Oh, that's cool. So that one's probably the hardest one to find a stand for. Do they have a special stand for uh, for Deep Space Nine? Now, the stands, I will say, leave a little something to be uh, desired as they are. Well, let's find out. So, I, you know, I think we've learned something about Mike in this process while he gets the stands out. Uh, there are those of us who, when they open up the bag of Skittles, and I've talked about this before, will eat, uh, the good ones first. No. We'll go straight to the ones they like first, or bad people, they're the bad people, or the correct people eat them, uh, uh, green, yellow, orange, red, purple, uh, which is the only correct way to eat Skittles. But you went straight to the mothership. Because uh, as a as a Deep Space Nine fan, you went straight to the grape. That's not usually how I would do it, Keith. But especially for Christmas, you always save the good ones for last, right? Because you want right. to build the That's anticipation. But uh, if anyone knows, <clears throat> these first five minutes of our episodes are <laughs> the only ones that uh, the algorithm catches. So we got to do the the good stuff first, right? Oh, oh, I see, I see. Okay, so the stands. I don't think they're. These are all. No, there are a couple. Seem like. Oh boy, the cat has arrived. You gotta get it. Oh my buddy. god. <laughs> this is episode's over. The cat's yeah. arrived. Uh, we luckily waited long enough so that Charlie is asleep. So uh Oh, you're right, Keith. Doing this backwards is very difficult. Right? Well, welcome to my toy cam hell. Okay, so there are no sp- special stands. They're all the same. So I don't know okay. that Deep Space Nine is even getting even a stand. gets one. Well, it doesn't need one because it stands up on its own. Okay, so we'll deal with those later. Okay, right. so where should we break let's into keep, next? Let's keep going. All right, Deep Space, thank you so much. Yeah. I'm going to keep so these separate. So these all have seat belts, too. Yeah, not all of them. But the Borg Cube does not, so let's go there okay, next. The Borg maybe. Cube does not need a seat belt. Very light. Well, sure. A lot of... Hold it still. Get it close. Oh, wait. You know what, Keith? I take it back. If you look... Oh, it does have a hole there for the stand. So... Oh, we get, it takes a little forcing. Well, no comment. All right. 
I'm not going to do this now. Hmm, that doesn't look right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, board cube. That's what you come here for, guys. Oh, well, let me give you a better hand. Yeah, get it. Uh, hold it there. Yeah. Focus, focus. Maybe on the spinner. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, wow. All right. I am very impressed with the level of detail on that, including the paint details. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not a, that is not a flat gray. No, there's lots of detail here. Wow, it that's like terrific. Two or three colors of paint in there. All right. It's Color me this, impressed. Let's go over to the stand. Right, right. Can it? Yep, this one works a little better. Somewhat. Can you stand a stand on the Borg? My wife is here feeding me. I'm playing with toys. My wife is feeding me lunch, and the cat is trying, and I have all the cat's attentions. This is a very, this and is you're a running banner three, day. Three cameras plus two of mine. Okay. <laughs> She's put, thank you. Thanks, sweetheart. I really appreciate you. <laughs> Sandwich looks good. Yeah, very cool. Now show show it on the stand on the side so I can see how it holds how it stands up. Ah, oh, darn, I'm gonna need these. Yeah, I know you're gonna love that. Okay, let me let me it's, it's gonna be a problem. I need to take out a loan. I need another job. All right. All right, so. All right. We'll just turn it on its side. There we go. Oh, okay, that's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Oh, very cool. With the with the uh, the transparent thing, and you can sort of hide it, stack it behind, mm -hmm. put the uh, put the stand up stage, and that's gonna look great. Yeah, it's a pretty cool shot. And then I think, like, if this was just on your desk, there's kind of, a, oh, oh, and we're out. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, oh, it's over. Uh, you know, we just solved best of both worlds pretty fast, just like that. There you go. Oh, that's cool. Oh, damn it. Now I need all these. This is a it's, uh, this is the most expensive episode we've ever done to my personal budget. Well, to Keith, stay tuned for us. Remind me at the end, I have a surprise. Okay. Okay, so there we go. All so right. there we got, we got, we're starting there. So where do you think we should go next? Let's just, why don't we just go across I the top? I think just go. Just, yeah. just, just go. Just go. Interesting the way they uh, approached the seatbelts. This one's, right. this one's on the nacelles, so we're gonna get in here with my knife. Right, right. Nacelle or nacelle? Nacelle. Although, you know, the pronunciation on Star Trek is always a little bit like, eh, whoever says it first. <laughs> I believe that I believe that was the rule. They do put pronunciation gu guides in the script, but frequently the way it worked practically is whoever said it first during filming determined how the alien species was pronounced. Oh, come on, runabout. Oh, no, that's not a runabout. Oh, oh, I guess it is a runabout. Oh, that's interesting. It's got some extra little details on the side. This is not the runabout. Oh, that's not? Then what the hell is that? Shall we go to the box, Keith? No, that's the runabout. No, because the runabout is elsewhere. I see it. N no, that's the shuttle. Oh, okay. I apologize, Keith. Oh, my God. Oh, they're coming for you. Are they windows? <laughs> Where the hell is this one? We're gonna, yeah. That's that, that. That is the runabout. Runabout, as seen in the emissary, as sort of as seen in the the prototype for what it ended up being an emissary, which is frequently what happens. Is that why we saw some differences? Is they uh, they'll send the toy companies their prototypes, and then the final version gets filmed later. So the toy companies sometimes get some of the details wrong, and that looks like that's what happened there. Is that looks runabout-ish, but it looks like runabout 1.0, which is interesting. Anyway, I think that's I think that's an interesting uh, interesting figure there. There, we I go. that's gonna do it for us. I so think. I wonder now. I'm going, I'm going to our friends at Wixaban, who uh, really have an incredible encyclopedia of these toys here, and wonder if they in subsequent releases of this modified the runabout. I don't know or if they even released it in any other place than this collector set i'm scrolling i think this might be the only set that actually had the runabout i have to get this lunch out of here i think it does look great 
<laughs> no lunch for you, Mike. We're looking at toys. I wish I could get this to freaking focus, but well, we we got the idea. Yeah, but like, there it is. There's even text on here. Oh yeah. You can put it put up like a flat thing instead of your hand because it's. Oh yeah, use use that cam. I think that camera's better. No. Oh, this is good TV. It's the worst. We always get it close and then. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. There it is. NCC, which, of course, it's an, that's another thing because it's not attached to a, a ship. They would not have an NCC on it. Yeah, it says, um, it does have a number NCC seven something, something, something. Yeah, yeah. So Dude, I, I think can't even the, read it with my eyesight. Well, they're they're not called normal size machines. They're micro machines. <laughs> okay. Wait, sh show me the back of the box again, and show me the runabout. I wonder what image they use. Okay. Of it. This is where they're going. So I oh, can't get that in focused either. Yeah, interesting. That is, it is the same one. Mm-hmm. Micro torpedoes. <laughs> what are micro torpedoes? <laughs> All right, cool. All right, let's keep going. Keep going. All right, so we uh, only have fifteen more to go. Hey, you know what? There are worse ways to spend your day, buddy. I, that's true. I, although you know, this is like an episode all about envy. This is like all the different flavors of envy written across my face right now. So, folks, just, I'm very small right now, but the, the envy is large. Okay, so we're going to what appears to be, Keith. Speaking of large, it's the D. Which is, looks very similar in scale to the, the Playmates tiny D from the, uh, oh, there you go. That's better. Nice. Wow, they really do get that text on there. That's amazing. Uh, from the Deep Space Nine model. Wow. How did they get that so small in there? That's very impressive. Very impressive. Look at all the windows. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All over it. Wow. All right. You know, it, it, there are obviously some compromises you make for being so small, but like, Seen in real life on the shelf, there's no way you would tell that there's any differences there. That's that's pretty good. This one's so far my fave, I think. It's pretty BA. And how how sturdy are they? Very sturdy. Now the And what's cool yes. is they're offset, so yes, you can you could stack it this way, right? Right, or go sideways or with go it. Sideways. So you get a lot of like No, okay, definitely not that way. Can't, can't do it that way. Can't do it that way. Okay. But I mean, it still looks like it's flying. It's pretty rad. That's really cool. That's really cool. Did now the individual sets? Did they come with stands? I I think they started to, but I don't think the original 1993 Super Pack came with stands, as far as I can tell. Stand or the collector view? set. Stand I think they added desk? stands. So I so here's my question to folks out there who have these. The ones that did not come with stands, did they have a hole for a stand in the bottom? Or was that something they added for the collector's edition? Uh I'm curious. It's so hard not to play with the things when you get them, Keith. There's there's no time to play. I know, no I'm time impressed to play. with your your ability to not play when you're doing yeah. this. Yeah. Well, you know. Okay, I'm thinking so let's, about you, the right. audience. Okay, let's go here. This now let's get some color going here. Okay, all right. I'm going to come in. Another one that I recognize. Okay, yeah, you, you tell us what you know about all of these ships. That's fun. I know that I'm trying not to destroy the ship or my finger, so. Yeah, save if the ship this first. This is a warbird, correct? Uh-huh, it is a Romulan, Romulan warbird. warbird. Yep, from Next Gen Era. Uh, now, of course, we've looked at the full-size Playmates, ver full-size, <laughs> we looked at the Playmates larger ship version of this on the channel, so you can check out, as well as the D, as well as uh, Deep Space Nine, uh, from Playmates here on the channel, just go into our Star Trek Toys playlist to see all of it. 
Um, yeah, a little bit less sort of paint detail there, but it's sort of green on green on green. That's that is sort of what the the warbird yeah, you get is. Some, there's some and, texture and and she the, and uh, she looks like she's she's looking off to the left there just a little bit. <laughs> All right, let's You've, see. What... So, something has caught her attention. Let's go over. Oh. All right. Cool. Very cool. Got to say. All right, let's get her on the desk view. All right, all right. Got to line them all up. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting that. We'll do that shot a little later. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's go back to Oh, okay, we gotta go. This would go faster if these were just undone better. Oh, here, this fell out, so let's go here next. Okay, there we go. Ah, yes, the original series, Klingons. Oh, that's cool. Yes. The Vorcha Attack Cruiser, I believe. Or am I confusing it? Don't don't come for me. Or is it the Klingon? I mean, it is. it is... Look, it's even got like the a different font there. Well, I mean, of course you've got to have the uh, the Klingon text. That's really clue, really cool. Or is that the battle cruiser? Hold on, don't come for me, nerds. I'm one of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one's cool too. You know, the attention yeah, to detail for as small as it is, is very good. Very impressive. It's, I mean, look, Micro Machines did they, good. They were really good toys. Yeah, I loved them. Yeah, I loved them. And they were all very functional. They rolled really well. I mm -hmm. mean, for such tiny little little cars, they really rolled well. High quality stuff. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so we, we did the runabout. Let's check out the shuttlecraft now. What do you say? Okay, great. Which we've also looked at the Playmates mm -hmm. larger size version of the Goddard, the shuttlecraft, which well, you can also sticky. see on our channel. I don't know if that's tape or just age. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, we all get sticky with age, Mike. There it is. That's the Berman. <laughs> of course, uh, executive producer Rick Berman, did he name a shuttlecraft after himself? Okay, we've definitely figured out that the wood block is the... Uh... That's the thing. Hold on. Did we ever see a Berman shuttlecraft on the show? No! Oh, okay. It was seen. No! <laughs> oh, my God. What's happening? Destruction. Oh, it was seen in causing... It... No, it was a collision with the... Berman? Yeah, okay, so it was used in the uh, in cause and effect on Next Gen. Wow. Named a shuttlecraft after himself. I like it. I will make no further comment about Rick Berman here on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts that I'm not saying. You all know what I mean. Uh, very cool. Hey, you know what? It's the least you can do is name one after him. I mean, sure. Or maybe that's not the least you could do. Well, you know, everybody has thoughts. I'm going to stay out of it. All right, buddy. Where should we go next here? I, did, I think you just grab one. All right, let's go in. Let's get some of the ships now. All okay, right, great. Well, I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to go in. I'm going to have to go hunting. All right. We're hunting ships. We're hunting ships. Going after the Excelsior, which we see both in the uh, the movie series and on Woo! Next Gen as several different ships, including the Enterprise B, I believe, using the same model. Excelsior I mean, they're class. They're really in there. I, I, I don't think they were going to escape the packaging, but they really wanted to make sure. No, you don't want to mess around. Very cool. Yet yeah, we see that the, it is a little hard to paint some, uh, some of those... Uh, Red lines on the side there on the uh, warp drive, but uh, very cool for that scale. Is that a shadow over the top of the back deck or is that a discoloration? Um, 
It looks like a discolored. That's my finger. It's discolored, Keith. Yeah, right. Oh, back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's some plastic. The molding is a little, little, little goofy. A little goofy. All right, all right. Still looks good, small though. Yeah, very cool. Let's get her on her stand and take a just a one spin. Uh -huh. Oh wow! So in the uh, in the collector's edition set two, the Enterprise D has a detachable saucer section. Oh, that's cool. Super cool. Like the 2023 Playmates ship. And this one is like, the way the stand is, it actually, oh, that's cool. Like, you can really kind of get in interesting with this. Oh. The stand, like the... Chip down. The way they're facing. Oh, that's cool. Oh, uh, we... You're definitely going to have to show us all of these lined up on the shelf. Yeah, I'm doing like a, a a small little version of that currently, but uh, we'll do a better version when I get I them all the up. big the big version. Yeah. Okay, maybe you can tell me what this thing is. Let me get this out so I can you can okay, give me some info. Okay. So I'm looking at this now. They also did a pewter effect on a lot of these things. Um, in 1995, they did a bronze one as well. Oh, interesting. And it looks like you can get all of the ships in the three limited edition collector sets. So you got one, and there's this two and a three. And that, of course, is a Cardassian Galar class warship. You should know that. Mm -hmm. I should have known. Well, we're, we're watching. If you, if, if you don't know already, Mike and I are watching Deep Space Nine and reviewing every single episode also here on the channel. But if you're watching this, you already know that. You got to say the attempt at paint detail is really impressive. You got four colors there. You've got yeah. different fonting. And you'd think that would have to be done with automation. Uh, but again, this is 1993. You don't have the 3D printing and the and the paint automation that you can have today, which is pretty good. That looks definitely looks a little more yellow than gold. Uh, it's but reading, again, it's the saturate, it's not as saturated as it's showing under the lights there. I it's see. definitely much more muted. Well, it's also hard to tell, uh, and I think we see this with a lot of the models, they have a really tough decision to make with the models because what they were actually looked like on screen versus what the model had to look like before you lit it. Mm. So all the colors and the stuff had to be much brighter because you were shooting them in space. So it was a very dark environment that they were in. So in order to pop, they had to be pretty bright. Which means if you make it accurate to the model they used for filming, it's going to look a little weird as a model on your shelf because the lighting environment is different. So I think you have to sort of split the difference in order to make it as screen accurate as you, or accurate to the model versus screen accurate, which are two different things because yep. of lighting yep. conditions. Uh, and of course, the original. Enterprise, the original series Enterprise, looking good. Yeah, that's very, cool. Yeah, very solid. Very good. Not not a ton of detail, but remember, there wasn't much detail on the original Enterprise because I was were, just watching uh, the opening crawl uh, a day or two ago because there was an episode on Plex, and it's crazy that model that they used for that opening script crawl is pretty basic. Hmm. Now, of course, if your chances are what you're watching is the recreation of mm -hmm. the original model because they went back and George Lucas most of the visual effects on the original series. So it, it is a digital model, not the mm -hmm. actual ship. But you can find places. But it's ba you know, obviously they made it to represent how simple the original model was. It's also about a fifth of the size of the of the D. Yeah, like this, you'll notice the way the holes are cut, and I think it might just be the way I've got it in there, but still, you kind of get some depth. Oh, it's great. I mean, that's the, one of the great things about the ship models is being able to basically film it yourself. And they're in the design of these, they have to be interesting from every angle because you're going to shoot them in all sorts of different angles. How does it look straight on? How does it look from above? How does it look from below? And all of the sort of design decisions are are really key to the production of the show. 
Definitely not a safety first operation happening over here. Uh, well, you know, never is. Okay, so this, this is a guy one... who already has an injury. Yeah, I know. This one's really cool. I'm excited to show you. I don't know much about it. Like from the top, I would say swing and a miss, right? We're not getting much happening. Right. Here. But when we flip that baby. Can you guess what that is? I mean, it's the underside of a bird. Uh huh. Bird of prey? No, we already it, did that, right? Uh, that's the Klingon. This is, well, yes, this is the Romulan oh. Warbird from the original series. So this is what they showed in the 60s. And then, of course, the green one that we see is the contemporary next-gen version of that ship. That's really cool. I really like this one. Yeah. It's, 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 a, not, it's very different. It looks sort of scary. And if you remember on Strange New Worlds, we saw an updated version of this. In the season finale of season one. Hmm. I don't remember. Oh, yeah. Yes, I do remember that. Yeah. This one, Pretty it's kind of sad that all the cool detailing's on the bottom, so you're not really getting the... Well, that's because you're being hunted from above. You're only going to see it when it's flying well, above you, about stalking. to take you this out. Is why, this is why you're here. This is why you're my Sherpa. <laughs> all right, this one looks a little bit like a horseshoe crab, so let's see what we Uh-huh. Sure. They, uh, in... In the designing room in 1986-87, uh, starting up Next Generation, they were really... Somebody must have like had a horseshoe crab as a pet. Because both you have the horseshoe on the bridge of the Enterprise D, and this, of course, is the design for the Ferengi Marauder that we see early in Next Generation. Uh, so this is the, uh, the design back when they were supposed to be the big bad. Lots of detailing there. Very cool. But you can also see that level of detail is on the micro machines corresponds with a level of detail from the era of the show. So mm -hmm. the next the, the original series didn't have nearly as much detail as once they moved to next gen. And then they were able to put more detail into the models because they were bigger and they had a much, much higher budget than uh than the original series back in the day. Okay. We are we're making good progress. We are. We're, we're finally moving. <laughs> uh, we've got, let's see, one, two, three, and then a bonus up there. Yes. Okay, this guy made it out alive. Ooh, NC 1864. Yes, that, of course, is the, uh, 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 what am I? It's the Reliant, the USS Reliant, uh, which we see a couple of times as a couple of different ships. Uh, on the uh, on next gen, but really cool looking ship, and of course, uh, wait, the reliance from uh, Wrath of Khan, right? Go, oh. Keith Wicks abandoned the hell out of it over there. Ah, that's right, I am. Hold on, now I'm accidentally screenshotting my thing. Oh my god, what a mess! <laughs> don't look, mom, don't look. <laughs> So really kind of funny behind the scenes story here. So, you know, Keith and I often have to shoot in the middle of the day and I'll sometimes come right from a meeting and I came from a meeting, uh, yesterday, was it, when did we shoot last? Uh, whenever I it don't. was, uh, yeah. Wednesday. Anyway, uh, I had forgotten to turn off my huddle, which is Slack sort of like m meetings software. And I use the same channel for Deep Space Nine, as I do for my meetings. Anyway, long story short, after we wrapped up, I get on my Slack and I see with my manager uh, a one hour and 26 minute huddle. So <laughs> I had stayed in the room and it recorded all of our <laughs> oh Trek God. show. Luckily, my manager, notice? my manager was not in the meeting. Thank goodness oh, thank she God. had left. Uh, <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Would have been more more hilarious had she been in the meeting like, well, so what? Uh, What's Deep Space Nine? Yeah, what's going on for an hour and a half while I'm paying you? Uh, yeah, so the Reliant, of course, from Wrath of Khan, which, uh, for our patrons, we will be doing a watch-along of Wrath of Khan next month. You don't want to miss it. It's a mess. But it's our kind of mess. It's fun. Oh, it messes And we'll get to see brand. it in action. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> our, our brand now is when you put that knife through your wrist and you oh, bleed I've, out all I've of them. I've got a method now. 
Okay, all right, all right. This brought to you by Leatherman. Everyone should have one or two. All right. And of course, Mike, what is this? We've looked at this before on the large scale. Um, I don't know, buddy. Is this is this the 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 uh, Klingons? It is. It is a Klingon battle cruiser. I believe this is a D. No. What is a? Uh, it's a Vorcha style attack cruiser. This one's cool. Uh, this one has a lot of sculpting. One. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that. We also have you know. In the other channel, I'm just advertising our other episodes while you're cutting things open, uh, we see the large Playmates scale of that also in our feed below if you want to see us open up that. Uh, I, th You know, I, I, I think it's a cool design, but it's nothing like the Bird of Prey. It's a little, it's a little Star Wars-y. It is a little bit. It's a little in sort of industrial looking. It's more practical looking, which makes more sense. Then like the the, uh, the bird of prey like beautiful interesting ship which doesn't necessarily make sense in space, uh, but uh, but of course we're coming up on the bird of prey the iconic bird of prey from many different properties but of course uh, the best use of it was always Star Trek Four. Oh, this one's real cool, man. Save the whales in your bird of prey. There it is. Yeah, there it is right there. Fantastic design on this ship. Look how cool that is. Have you seen Star Trek 4, Mike? Oh, this that's the whales, right? Yeah, the whales one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's a much smaller ship than the, uh, the other attack cruiser. But it's a just super, super cool looking. It's got the cloak. Can fly around in that. Looks great. Let's get a spin. Let's get a spinny. Love that ship. Love that. This ship. is a cool ship. I, I think you're right. I, I, I. This one's rad. Yeah, I gotta get, gotta get my hands on the Playmates version of that. Because it's just, it's just one of the most iconic ships, especially Definitely wants to be probably this way. I guess it would be the the most iconic non-Federation ship, maybe tied with the Borg Cube. Mm, okay. Would be would be my guess. Uh but uh certainly well designed. We've you've got the whole fleet building up there. Yep, and I want to get this last special sauce one. That's right. This is our bonus, right? Yes, it is. Now, Mike, why don't you tell us what this is? Because uh, if you remember, we spent about 45 minutes staring at it with the patrons as we watched Star Trek 1. So this is the A, right? This is the... Well, that's true. It's Enterprise not, A, right? It, that's the A. Oh, it's not the refit. All right, I take, you, I take it back. This is the A. You have not seen the A yet. I haven't. No, no, we're we're not going to get the A for a while, uh, but it is very similar to the refit of the Enterprise. Uh, yeah, from the uh, from the film series, we're going to get there every month. We're going to watch the next Star Trek movie with our patrons at patreoncom slash k and m. So, uh, so Mike, let, let me let me just ask you, uh, what did this set you back on eBay, Keith? Uh, with shipping, mm -hmm. twenty five dollars. That's a pretty damn good deal. I it gotta was. get me one of them. It, it was a pretty good deal compared to, um, so, and not everybody was listening it for that cheap. I think this person didn't know what they had on their hands. Uh, and that's not all. Keith. That is not. That's all. not all. I'll tell you. I'll tell you in just a second. First, I want okay. to. Uh, Pop this should we do what, what is now? Is this a another bonus we should do a whole episode on, or no, is no, this no, a no, 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 no. okay? Um, sorry, let's take I'm... a look at the fleet. Oh, yeah, we're just like flying over it. So, this is how they they shot it just take the camera and fly it around the little ships. Oh, oh, that's cool. That's Dude, really cool. Really cool. That's super, super cool. Uh, I gotta say, that's really neat. All right, those are gonna come to my house soon enough. <laughs> well, Keith, hold on. 
Okay. All right. So I'm holding. that is that was the lot that I purchased. That was the uh-huh. lot that showed up. But okay. Uh, let me turn that. Now box. we're all seasick. There yep. we go. Uh, but also in the box. What you got a bonus in the box? There's a bonus in the box. What? An eBay person, a kindly eBay person, sent you a bonus in the box. What is it? Oh, you got another set! It's the Deep Space Nine set. Oh my god, look at that! So this one will stay in the box and come your way, buddy. They just threw it in? Uh, yeah, I don't know if it was a mistake, or if it was... It definitely was not listed in it, so... Oh, how cool is that? And there I was thinking they didn't make the runabout in another set, but hell yeah, they did. So interestingly, on the back of this, there are lists ships that are not in this collection, so it must be... Like, we didn't see this guy, right? No. Space Doc, or this guy... No, well, those those are and later uh, sets, I guess. Later sets, different uh, different breakouts. Wow, damn! I'm gonna have to get the other ones now. Sets two and three, aren't I? I mean, duh. <laughs> anyway, so this one I'll hold on for you, buddy. Oh, I'm excited. WrestleMania, I'm excited. WrestleMania is just Keith coming to pick up his toys. I'm I'm just I'm not even gonna watch. I'm just gonna drive by, <laughs> take all my toys, and leave. This yeah. has been fun. This has been fun. If you would like more of our nonsense, you can join us at our Patreon feed at patreon.com slash K&M linked below uh, in the YouTube feed. I hope you enjoyed all this as much as I did. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. For sure. Because even secondhand, that was super, super fun. Uh, we'll see you next time with another fun and exciting episode of... Look at my Star Trek toys! Whoosh!